yeah. I think it's probably just like the preparation that just makes it feel so overwhelming to me. I don't well, know easy. why. Just don't prepare. There you go. Just, just show, show up. up. That's what I do for all my lessons. That's what I do for this podcast. You just show up. It turns <laughs> out fair fun. enough. That's fair true. enough. <laughs> we were just like, sorry, Santa's probably not going to be here just tonight. A small workshop fire he's taking care of. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's probably what we should have said instead of sorry, he's just not coming. <laughs> And Unfortunately, oh there were too many kids on the naughty list at this I event, know. so he yeah. could not <laughs> schedule it's your it. Your fault, guys. <laughs> Alex, hi. We're so excited Whoa. to have you. I'm excited to be here. Thanks so much for coming of on course. the podcast. Thanks today. for having me. How's your day going so far? Uh, it's going awesome. Go I think. You think? You're not <laughs> sure yet. I had to Whoa. do some difficult homework earlier, <laughs> but oh. that's it. Other oh, than oh, that, gosh. it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell us everything about you because we were kind of talking before, <laughs> yeah. but I need to hear about this homework because you're an ASL major. Yes. Okay, so like what, how was the homework for that? Well, the specific homework I was doing today was I'm taking a technology class where we basically, I don't, I don't really know how to describe it. It's, we're learning how to make content like that is accessible to for deaf people and like we have to edit our videos like Ever since my first day of being an ASL major, I've had to make videos. Like, that's normal. But with this specific class, we have to make videos with a very specific, like, camera. And we have to edit it so that we have a black background so that you can see the hands easily. Wow. And just just all these different things that you have to edit for the video. And which is fine, but the program's have not been working super well for me Ooh, and I'm not true. very tech savvy. So mm. it's it's been difficult with just this specific class, but we're almost done. So there you go. <laughs> after yeah. that, we'll be fine. <laughs> Good. I'm so yeah. glad. Good luck. So how far along in school are you? So I am, I have about one year left. Okay. Um, of course, I'd probably be done by now if I didn't have a child, <laughs> but that's how it goes, you know? to set things back a little bit. <laughs> just a little yes. bit, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, so I just have two semesters left and then I'm graduated and Yay. and then I'm home free. So Oh my gosh, Kate. Yeah. So excited for you. Thank you. I should also say, like, you're a host on Saints Unscripted. Yes. So you're like doing so much. So that's how we <laughs> kind of got in touch with you. Yeah. Um, was from that. So tell us about your experience on Saints Unscripted. How's it going? Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's awful. it's been super yeah. yeah, I hate it. It is awful, you guys. <laughs> like, no. please hire me for your I've podcast. I've been waiting right? for a chance to vent <laughs> about this. I hate it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, they they're awesome. I think it's it's so fun and all the people that all the other hosts are so much fun and and it like I was saying earlier, you get to meet so many cool people and hear so many cool stories that you just wouldn't otherwise, you know? So I think it's a really cool experience to be able to have and to be able to be on something like that. So it's totally. awesome. You, know, you do an amazing job. Oh, We're huge fans of Saints and Scripted. We <laughs> love watching. So love to hear that. Yes. Um, another exciting thing is you have a baby. I need to hear all about your baby and you're pregnant. Yes. yes. Sorry, maybe not baby. How old he, is your He's going to be two son? in February. <gasps> so oh he's gosh. We're almost there. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> so toddler, but like we can still call him But he's still my baby yes baby. so yeah <laughs> so cute yep. yeah it's super fun he's just getting so big and it's just so crazy to just watch him learn all these new things and just all these new skills and you're just like you are like a child now you're not this tiny little baby anymore yeah. you know and Aww. which is it's sad but it's also so much fun like yeah. I was telling my husband the other day I I feel like this is my favorite age and then I thought but I've said that for every other age oh he's God. been. That's literally they're just me. always fun. Yeah. You know? Totally. So I'm like, you know what? That gives me hope for the future. Until he's they're not, bigger. right? Until they're Isn't not. One time you're like, exactly. oh, that was my favorite age. Now yeah. it's all down. Yeah. I was thinking probably until we get to like the three. I, I've heard it's mm. not terrible twos. It's actually three in ager. That's what I've heard. Terrible oh, okay. threes. So I'm, I, I was going to say like probably, 13 is where it drops. 13, but. that too, probably, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> or whenever they just get into Roblox. I don't know. That might be yeah. earlier. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know how we're going to do that. <laughs> That's what it's easy. How old is, is your child? He's almost one and a half. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. so fun. I know. It, yeah, it's so fun. He's like yes. a little toddler. Mm -hmm. So Just getting so big day yes, after day. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> and so, and how far along are you in your pregnancy? I am, I think I'm almost about 21 weeks. 
So <gasps> to translate that, it's I think about five months. I know before I got pregnant, I was always like, "What does that mean? What? How oh, many yeah. weeks? Twenty-one weeks. What does that mean? That's you know, way too like, many tell weeks me to in count. months. Yeah. I know yeah. there was nine months. What month are you? If you pass yeah. six weeks, you're like, Ex- what are you even talking about? Exactly. So I'm like, it's about five months, I believe. I don't know. I, so. I'm with you on the weeks. <laughs> I'm just halfway there. That's all I say. Yes. There you yes. Go. Yep. <laughs> and you know the gender? I do. It's a little girl. <gasps> oh my god. There you go. Yeah. I'm Got so one happy. of each, so your bases yep. are covered now. So you know, everybody says that, but I want way more children. So we're I mean, you definitely don't have to stop. still going. Like, you know, <laughs> now it's optional. Now it's, it's all true. your own choice. It's true. I could be done. It's by like now. those yeah. families with like seven boys, where you're like, oh, uh-huh. you were just hoping for a girl, huh? Yep. You just kept I going. No, right? <laughs> no kidding. Yep. No, I'm glad that it's gonna be that it's gonna be a girl, and we will have one of each, and we hope yeah. to have. Like at least two six of, of each. each. Yeah. Six of each. Six of each. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that sounds perfect. They sick like Mormon family, right? There you Literally. Go. Oh my gosh. No, I wanted to ask you too, because I saw this post on Reddit recently and there is a lady who or a girl, she's in like a newlywed ward, like a student married ward. Uh-huh. Um, and she's like, What is the best way to serve couples who just had a baby she's like we bring Mm. meals but like is there anything else i could do like do you have any like what would you say (sighs) that is such a good question Uh, meals are a huge one yeah for sure because when you are freshly postpartum and you're not getting that sleep and you just feel terrible you don't want to cook. Like right. we we just lived off of only frozen foods for right. like five months. You even know? just yeah. trying to stand in the kitchen long yeah. enough to make a meal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Or even like think, yes. like decide what we're having. It's like just the so mental true. part of it. To be able to just take a casserole out of the fridge from a ward mm-hmm. member and put it in the oven. Like that is just, that's perfect. But honestly, for me, I think a huge thing for me was my um, mother-in-law came in town to help us. Mm-hmm. And she stocked our fr- our, fr- our ugh, sorry she stocked our freezer with cookie dough, and so anytime <laughs> oh we were just God. like up super late or I was just like feeling so terrible or whatever, I'd uh-huh. be like I should need some cookies. Oh and my, my husband gosh. would go preheat the oven, he'd put some cookies in the oven, Stop and it. I got fresh homemade cookies anytime I wanted. That was my favorite there thing. That's the about best. yeah. So now whenever my friends are pregnant, I'm like, I'm gonna stock your freezer with cookie dough. Yes. So there's there's something. No, you that know, is if anybody such wants a good to do idea. that, cookie dough. That's oh, the nice. way to go. Everyone take notes. Yep. Relief Society, Compassionate Service Committee members, yep. like that's that's on just you. get on just make a bunch of cookie dough and it's oh it d- makes all the difference oh i love that well, i yeah. hope you get lots of cookie dough and oh, lots thanks. of meals yes me too <laughs> another thing we want to ask you i know we're filming this in advance but when this comes out it's going to be pretty close to christmas mm-hmm. i mean already is kind of yeah, yeah i feel like in the christmas close. spirit but i wanted to ask you as like a fun get to know you question like for you what makes an ideal ward christmas party Oh, man, that is such a good question. I feel like, okay, I am not very original in the sense that I love, love, love funeral potatoes. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's like typical Utah, like Mormon thing. But there's a reason why. But it's so good. Like, I love funeral potatoes more (laughs) than I probably should. So for me, I would probably. Best part of anybody passing away is funeral potatoes. (laughs) It's so true. You have those to look forward to, right? (laughs) But yeah, so for me, it's like, if there's funeral potatoes, I'm probably going to be okay. You okay. know? <laughs> I'm not super picky. She's but... like, nativity, who cares? Kids, yeah, right. Okay. I like the funeral potatoes. Just pass potatoes. over the potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Priorities. Come on. Yeah, no, oh I definitely gosh. think that the food is a huge one. Yes. And, and of so course... So you want full meal, not just like a dessert thing. You want dinner? I, I would prefer dinner. Or yeah. breakfast. I mean, breakfast is fun, too. Okay. I do really, really like the breakfast board activities, what about for a, sure. a bagged sandwich? A bagged sandwich. <laughs> there it depends. It depends. Funeral potatoes. If, they, if like it comes in a side of funeral bag. potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. It kind of depends on where the sandwich came from, I think. Mm. But I probably would be okay with that. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not like super picky. So yeah, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Okay. I want to ask you too, because I asked this to our audience and Santa, Santa being there was like Uh a hot topic. Oh, really? Um, People had some hot takes. Interesting. What do you think? Like, do you like Santa to be there? Oh, that is, that's really interesting that that would be so controversial. Controversial. (laughs) That's a fun word. Um, (laughs) Okay, I think personally, I don't think it matters too much. I think that obviously 
we're here to focus on the savior and like what the you know the reason for the season that whole thing but i know that as a kid seeing santa was a lot of fun yeah and that's kind of what you look forward to when christmas happens so I don't I don't know. I feel like there's some debate. I can understand mm-hmm. why there's some debate. And I think it just kind of depends on maybe what your ward family wants. Maybe there's a majority. I don't know. Um, yeah, if there's like a big primary program, like yeah. a lot of kids. Yeah. Like if you're expecting a lot of kids, that mm-hmm. could probably be like a really good way to get them engaged, you know, and get totally. them to come and, and just make it fun memories for everybody. So mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but, yeah, you know. <laughs> I was surprised, honestly. Like I yeah. didn't realize how intense it was for some people like because I remember a ward Christmas party when I lived in Michigan and like there was like Santa like you could hear the footprints on the ceiling like the reindeer and then like Santa the roof oh on the roof (laughs) the reindeer walking on the ceiling down just right there (laughs) that would give people nightmares (laughs) on the the roof footprints (laughs) appearing but like you heard him coming down and then it was like a guy in the ward dressed up as Santa and I loved that but like I do also see where people are coming from sure I was gonna say I lived in a stake where Santa was banned he wasn't allowed to come are you serious really wait he was banned like what do you mean the stake president was like none of the wards (gasps) can have a Santa because wow. Jesus is the guy, not Santa. Oh my I mean, for a church thing, I get it. I mean, There's it, other you places. can't really argue with him, but you're like, it's fun. But yeah. it's like, yeah, it's Santa. Mm-hmm. That yeah. does make me think of a story. Can I share a story real Please. fast? Yeah. So speaking of Santa at ward parties, there was a ward party a couple years ago that I was in charge of. I was in charge of like the decorations and some of the activities and stuff. And I was thinking... Somebody had suggested we should have Santa. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's a genius idea. Like, we have kids in the ward. Let's have Santa. And I was so excited. And I asked my husband. I was like, do you want to be Santa? And he was like, sure, because he would just be really good at that. (laughs) And so I was like, sweet. So we had it all set up. And I was going to go get the costume. And the day of the party came. And I seriously underestimated how difficult it would be to get this costume. (gasps) So I went to this store. And I was calling places around. And we had already told the the uh, ward that Santa was going to be coming. So bring your kids, you know. And they were so excited. And I couldn't get this costume. And we didn't get Santa to come. Oh, my god! And we gosh. had to tell people, I'm so sorry. Santa's, like, we didn't have to announce it in front of everybody Santa's at the ward. Santa's sleigh broke down. <laughs> Santa's yeah, not exactly. going to make like, it. Like, he's stuck somewhere. No, I was, we were just like, sorry, Santa's probably not going to be here There's tonight. There's a small workshop fire he's taking care of. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's probably what we should have said instead of, sorry, he's just not coming. <laughs> And Unfortunately, like, there were too many kids on the naughty list of this event, so he yeah. could not <laughs> schedule it. That's your in. fault, guys. <laughs> no. That is. So I know. Funny. I felt so bad because I know at least one family was pretty upset with me oh. about it. So I was like, wow. well, so you anyway. do what you can. It's a free ward party. I know. Like, you and can find I Santa. Tried. Go to the mall. I mean, day yeah. off exactly. is pretty bold, though. I know. Like I said, well, I was in charge of other things, too, and I thought yeah, you get I busy, for sure you know, can get yeah. a costume at this one place, but yeah. I didn't think about the fact that other people might also need that costume, so mm. that's why I couldn't get it, but... I learned. <laughs> yep. There's always next year. Yep. Unless you move to a stake where Santa is banned. Is banned. I yep. feel like, is the prophet approving of this? Like, can we ban people from churches? <laughs> like, I guess Santa. There you go. But, that's like, the angle. That's the angle. I thought all visitors were welcome. <laughs> Gathering Israel. <laughs> Yeah. Um, another... From all four corners of the earth. I yeah. mean, he's visited them all. Like, bring him in. Let's hear his I testimony. <laughs> Let's hear his Can testimony. Can you imagine he, like, gets up, he, like, gives a talk? <laughs> um, another thing he that we wanted... the fourth wise man for the nativity play. Just comes in <laughs> bearing gifts. That's genius. This is there great. There it is. We need to amend every you, nativity. We need to make this happen, bring him right, in. guys. Next year, tell Bishop. <laughs> I need to see this happen. <laughs> Okay, another thing that we wanted to get your take on, this is a little bit of church news. Sure. You might have already heard about it. Um, but there's new ward boundary minimum requirements. Um, oh, okay. So this is actually really interesting. There's new requirements to form a stake. This is um, being applied to the U.S. and Canada. Um, so it's now unified with other countries. So let me tell you the previous guidelines. So in the U.S., you needed 3,000 members to form a stake. And in other countries outside of the U.S. and Canada, they needed 1,900 people to form a stake. Now you need just 2,000 people to form a stake. 
okay. um, in the U.S. And so basically, there's a lot of details that they went over how many Melchizedek priesthood holders you need that can serve in leadership positions, how many participating adults. But long story short, people are anticipating that this is going to mean there's going to be a lot of ward boundary changes, especially in like Utah and Idaho, where there are a lot of members and making smaller wards. Sure. So there's been a lot of talk online about like what does this mean for the church and kind of like pros and cons of smaller wards versus bigger wards Mm -hmm. so i wanted to ask your opinion do you prefer being like in a big ward or a smaller ward yeah um i personally think i like being in smaller wards better Mm -hmm. i know that i had a my singles ward out in colorado was so so small we could everybody could fit in the Relief Society room and everybody knew Um, everybody and it was just I I like that kind of intimate connection with people so I personally prefer a smaller ward Um, and I know that there are a lot of wards out here especially just like in Provo I have some family members who are in a ward that is big enough to be a stake and I just can't imagine you know being the nursery leader in that or you know like so I I see this as a good thing I think I think there's a lot of pros to this for sure. I was going to say smaller yeah. ward is a pretty broad term as well because like yeah. you were saying you could have some wards that just are really actually really small and then like in Utah a small ward would be like 200 people. Yeah that's true. It depends on where you are for sure. Yeah so with that it says wards will need 250 members and 20 active full tithe paying, paying Melchizedek priesthood holders who can serve in leadership positions. Mm. But that's so that's, that's total ward membership, not active membership. Is that right? And then 100 participating adults. Okay. So that would be so like active. Go. So well, I think adults, yeah. Yeah. So, the kids. Right. so yeah, that, that's a lot smaller. I think our yeah. ward right now has like six or 700 people. Wow. Not active, like going every week, but uh-huh. it's like. It's a lot bigger than this. And our stake is a lot bigger than this as well. So Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. What do you think, Eric? Big ward versus small ward? Um, yeah, I gotta agree on the small ward. Um, I mean, obviously you're never gonna go like too small in a place like Utah because they're not gonna chop you and make you a branch or anything. So right. it's not gonna be tiny ever. So mm-hmm. I mean it's just opportunity to actually serve in a calling, you know? Rather than making up and they're like, you're going to be door greeter number seven. Yeah. Where every fifth Sunday, the third, fifth Sunday of the year, you'll be the door greeter. And you're like, uh-huh. okay, great. Can't wait to serve. You know, so like yeah. that, uh, it's nice to actually be able to do something in the ward. For mm-hmm. sure. Which I guess, you know, sometimes it's nice to not do something where like you're pregnant and just had a baby and you're busy. You're like, mm-hmm. I don't need a calling. I got plenty. Right. <laughs> but, you know, like uh, I think for most p- periods of life, it's nice to have something to do and, you know, keep yeah. busy at church. Yeah. Totally and feel agree. like you're not falling through the cracks. Because I feel like in a big ward that can sometimes happen is you feel like, do the bishopric, are they even like aware of me? Do they even yeah. really know who I am? Um, and I'm just thinking of, we previously lived in New Mexico and it was a lot smaller of a ward than compared to here in Utah. And I was in the ward council and I just feel like I first of all like knew everyone in the ward Mm -hmm. and in ward council it was like okay these are our focus families and like we were like constantly following up with people and it was just like everyone was in on it together to like help minister to these families and in Utah I'm not I'm not in the ward council. I was gonna say that's a big difference is you're not in the ward council. So I don't know maybe it is but I just feel like there's so many people like even in i'm in young women's and we talk about like girls that aren't active like there's just so many youth i don't know i just feel like it's harder to like really be so aware of every single person and like have that family feel as well yeah that's what i was thinking like it's it's you know we always say the words word family you know and it's like you can actually feel more like a family and like a unit when it is just a little bit smaller Mm -hmm. you know so yeah Totally. The one con that I saw some people talking about with having small wards is that people can get burnt out because in some smaller wards, people are having like two to three callings. Like in New Mexico, I think I had like four callings. And so, like, it was it was a lot. Like, obviously, I was happy to serve, but that was our own fault. We were like working in the temple. And, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, yeah. So we we volunteered we, for extra. Yes. And we accepted, like, knowing <clears throat> what it would be. But yeah. that's a lot – something a lot of people were saying was it's, like, it's, like, the same family is getting rotated through a lot of the leadership callings and people sure. are having multiple callings and it's just a lot of work. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. Yeah, I was, I've definitely seen that where people just said there's just so much going on. It was in an area with, like, a lot of need as well. So you mm-hmm. had, like – just a lot of service and things going on on top of just regular helping run awards. So 
there's a lot of people that just kind of were like, you know, I'm just going to take a break from church because it's yeah. just too much. Yeah. Which is sad to hear because yeah, like, church is supposed to be like restful and recharging you or whatever. But for them, they're like, I need to rest from church <laughs> yeah. to be able to unwind and take yeah. some time. So totally. It was crazy. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest impact will be like in the really high population areas with members. Does that, does that make sense? The high population, the, where are there are <laughs> a lot of members. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. <laughs> um, so we'll see. There's no immediate changes, but starting in January, stakes will be able to f- give new proposals for like new ward boundaries and everything. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. Let us know your thoughts in the comments if you have any thoughts on this. Um, but the next thing we want to jump into is something fun. Okay. We're going to do a little quiz with you. Oh, yes. Don't worry. It's not like a knowledge quiz it's like a personality quiz sounds so. like fun <laughs> we, no wrong answers no wrong unless answers unless you don't know yourself i guess <laughs> that's mm, should probably worry about that <laughs> apparently this quiz is going to tell us our next calling oh so i want to know first like do you have a calling right now i do what is it i'm really society teacher <gasps> Ooh. Okay. A really sexy teacher. Yeah. I could totally <laughs> see you doing so well i'm like oh, i want to come to one of your lessons <laughs> how thanks. do you like it um, if <laughs> wow, she maybe like off it. the record, <laughs> she doesn't like kind of it. have a hard time with it. <laughs> I'm gonna send this to everyone in your ward, <laughs> to your bishop. <laughs> right, we're gonna make this known to everybody. You no. women are the reason she hates this. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Is it just like what do you not like? It's like it's kind of a lot of work. Well, I think it's just I don't I don't I can't quite put my finger on what it is. But it's one of those callings that I used to always be like, oh, I'm so glad I'm not a teacher. You know what I mean? Like, I just, for some reason, I just didn't want to do it. I know. (laughs) And so when they called me, I was like, well, maybe, maybe I should just try it. Like, let's just, I don't know. Like, it was really hard, but I did it. And I do still kind of have a hard time with it when I have to prepare a lesson. But after it's prepared and I'm teaching, I'm like, oh, yeah, I could do this again, you know? Oh, yeah. So I think it's probably just, like, the preparation that mm-hmm. just makes it feel so overwhelming to me. I well, don't know easy. why. Just don't prepare. There you go. Just, just show, show up. up. That's what I do for all my lessons. That's what I do for this podcast. You just show up. It turns out Fair fine. enough. That's Fair enough. True. <laughs> <laughs> but here you can edit stuff out. You know, you can't no, do that live, see, that's literally. Actually, though, here's the fun. I prepare my lessons and my talks and stuff. The thing is, I just do it very different for me me so she feels like i don't prepare gotcha <laughs> to me what you do is not prepare see that's what i'm saying <laughs> not, i come very prepared. well prepared ready it turns out great it does turn out great that's the worst Be- part that's the because worst, of right because of my diligent preparations <laughs> that just look nothing like what you do and that's okay you know he just he's really into i got my spirit. six bullet points oh, on the paper yeah. and that it's enough to jog my memory what i thought about and I she's see, like I you have nothing what is this i couldn't do that i have to write down every single thing that i want to say <gasps> me too yeah me too yeah. i get that um but i'm sure you do a great job thanks and, and i feel like it is sometimes like so mental in your head you're like oh i have to prepare a lesson but then it's like true. once you're done it's like okay let's like do it. okay we're good yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what would you say? Do you have like a dream calling? Oh, you know, I have always kind of wanted to be in the young women's. I remember my experience as a young woman with my leaders, just all of that in general was just so much fun. It was like one of the most fun times of just like growing up. So I would probably say young women's. Yes. Me too. I think it's like, it's the best. Yes. I hope I'm in young women's for the rest of my life. That would be awesome. That's the only thing I've I've done primary. I've done Relief Society. I think I'm like good with just young women. Yeah, you you checked them both off. So now you know and you you want to stick with it. Yes. There you go. I hope every future bishop I ever have is listening. I hope Heavenly Father is listening. (laughs) You know what I want. (laughs) But that's how you know you're not going to be there because he's like, ha ha, I've got another plan for you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Eric, what is your dream calling? We'll see how it lines up. I don't I don't know. I don't have a dream calling. I don't think there's something I'd want to like do forever in church. I think the next calling I'd want maybe like gospel doctrine teacher or something that'd be cool. Yes. Okay. Yes. I could see that. See, I like teaching because I don't get stressed about the prepare the preparing part of it. And then I just kind of like the discussion and stuff and Yeah. I'm sometimes pridefully I'm like, "Man, I could do a better job than this guy." <laughs> But, but I mean, I don't know. You ever sit in a lesson where you're like, oh, they're just yeah, like reading yeah, the manual no, to us. This is uh, not great. Like, yep. let's do this the way the church has asked us to do it. Yep. Yeah. I totally get where you're so, coming from. Yeah. So we'll see what we all end all right. up with. But you guys can follow along. We'll have the link to this quiz in the description. So follow along with us. But 
we're going to answer these questions and they're going to guess our next calling. Just so, kidding. okay. Yeah. Question one. Are you a brother or sister? Wow. Ooh, sister of Zion. I was going to say, like, so... well, I don't know if I can <laughs> say I'm part of the army of healing. Man. That's kind of yeah. bold. Like, is there like... Is there like a step down? <laughs> Didn't quite make the cut for the army, but was trying out. Like... Right. <laughs> Okay, what best describes your attitude during sacrament meeting? So oh. reverent and attentive, a little distracted and slightly mischievous, <laughs> you know, sleepy you but know, trying all to pay those attention. Mischievous people at church, <laughs> or sleepy and sleeping. Let's be honest. Huh. Oh man, what these are awesome putting? answers. It probably just depends on the week. I could pick all of them. I want to mm. pick both the distracted and sleepy one. <laughs> Like, can I pick multiple? <laughs> I don't know if it will let you. I don't think I'll it like, will. Okay. No, I'll just choose one. Guys, I'm doing reverent and attentive because I really, I do my Well, not lately. Test, so. Okay. But when you have kids, yeah. it changes everything. Yes. That's why I'm putting like, just, I mean, that's why I want to say sleepy You've been pretty mischievous lately at church, you know? <laughs> Always running around with Eli. <laughs> playing those play, pranks. Playing in people. the hallway. <laughs> Actually, I literally do now just chat and... Okay, cut this out. I chat in the hall. Well, he doesn't sit still do during you? sacred meeting, so I have to go and it's like a baby party. Like, oh my gosh. So many yeah, because everybody's out there with yeah. their kids. Yeah, so, so we're she just, intentionally yeah. pinches him, so he starts crying. There and you go. Like, <laughs> gotta go. <laughs> gotta take him out. <laughs> What like, do you do? So we have eight other ladies. Oh they got a cake. They got popcorn. They got party hats. Yeah. We need to start bringing snacks for ourselves. We have snacks for the kids. That That's would be legit. Idea. Okay, I'm sticking to mine. Is everyone everyone good with that one? Got it. What'd you put? I I'm still trying to decide uh -oh. between the two because I wouldn't say mischievous, but I'm definitely distracted. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like... I'll probably just do the sleepy, but trying to pay attention. Okay. That's what I'm going with. Did you do sleepy and sleeping? No. Oh. I did <laughs> reverent and attentive. You did? What do you mean? <laughs> I pay attention. I mean, it's your quiz. <laughs> wow. Yeah, my college roommates, though, definitely would have said sleepy and sleeping. <laughs> I don't... For some reason, when I was at BYU, like church, with those chairs, that like the auditorium seats, like they were just oh, too yeah. comfortable. Mm. And uh, yeah, my roommates have several photos of when I very briefly close my eyes longer than normal. Oh my gosh! <laughs> just closing your eyes though. Just like fine. like this in a picture. <laughs> just and praying. And they're like, yeah, that's I'm what just... it is. They would put captions like that, like just deeply pondering what's being yeah, said. Yeah, that's what it is. I love it. Um, how does this? How does the following image make you feel? <laughs> That's a tough um, one. So the options are fun, ouch, I feel nothing, or I can extrapolate at least four solid gospel messages from this. <laughs> and, and the picture is a pile of Legos. Yes. Oh, man. I, mine is not an option. Yeah? My, I need to organize these by color and <laughs> clean them up. They're unorganized. That's a, I love that's it. That's a form of ouch. <laughs> It hurts you or, on the inside. Or if you like organizing, it could be fun, right? <laughs> I mean, that's true. I do. I liked Legos growing up. I guess I'll put fun. I'm in between fun and I feel nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, those are very different. I know, right? <laughs> this is a very interesting quiz. It is. Eric, what are you putting? I went with ouch. Okay. Ouch. Just too many times Fair stepping enough. on Legos. Yeah, they're brutal. <laughs> okay next did you make a decision yes okay. <laughs> yes i'm going with i feel nothing okay because these are a very common sight in my house so. <laughs> okay that yep. makes sense <laughs> just part of the background noise yep basically <laughs> what do you do when a member of the bishopric calls I have been known to let it go to voicemail i answer it no hesitation or i answer it slightly nervous Mine would be I would answer it fully nervous, filled with anxiety. So I'm gonna go <laughs> yeah, with that last that's one. That's I think that's what I would go with too. Yeah. Do you remember the last time Bishop called me? He's like, I want to talk to you. I I about had a full panic yeah, attack. Sure. I'm getting fired. What did I do wrong? I'm like, I'm getting fired. I, I was like, he saw the podcast. He saw my Instagram post. He's like, gonna release me. I was oh, like, no. I was freaking out. Do you oh remember that? It was crazy. 
Not specifically. I just remember you freaking out. Yeah. yeah I just got a calling. It was fine. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I don't think I don't think you've seen the podcast. Well, what was the calling? Do you, young is it women. a good? Oh, is young, uh-huh. okay, cool. She's worried about so getting excommunicated yeah, and then like, finds <laughs> out like, no, it's just like normal just, when they call you to meet with you. It's because yeah. they're trying to give you a calling. I don't know. I or I hate it when people are like, I have to talk to you about something. Oh gosh. Like, oh yeah. yes, that's the worst. It. She's like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah I I got her when we were dating by accident with that. Oh no. Oh hey, remind me. We need to talk about something later, and she'd be like freaking out. Like, I'm oh like, my God. I was like, hey, yeah, I was me. thinking about making lasagna. Do you want this in it? And she's it's like, it's just something so what? simple. <laughs> like, I just didn't want to forget to talk about it. Later. I have to preface that with my husband. I have to be like, remind me to talk to you about this. And it does nothing you did wrong. Yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> it's just about whatever. <laughs> Literally, my boss, my old boss would be like, I have to talk to you later. You're not getting fired. So it's fine. Like, we just have something to talk about. But close. Yeah. yeah. But close. <laughs> what did you put? Uh, no hesitation. Okay. That's accurate. Um, what do you wear when you watch the Sunday morning session of general conference at home? Ooh. Oh, so my Sunday best, my pajamas or casual clothes? Definitely pajamas. Yeah. So no shame there. Pajamas for sure. <laughs> I mean, it's morning session. So I'm like, I just woke up. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you are. Yeah. And I'm probably going to stay in those pajamas all day because I'm probably not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's Sunday. Like there's yeah. nowhere to go but church. Yeah, exactly. No church. <laughs> um, how long does it take you to get ready for church on Sunday morning? Less than 30 minutes, between 30 minutes and one hour or more than one hour? Mm. Mine's more than one hour. <laughs> Don't at me. Mine's less than 30 minutes. Really? Yeah. Good for you. I have become, I've had to become that. (laughs) Especially because we have 8.30 church and 8.30 (gasps) is typically when we're actually waking up on a normal day. (laughs) Literally. So I've got to just like slap things on and then I'm good. Oh my gosh. I've never met anyone else who's had 8.30 church. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it's Like, I'm so sorry. Are you switching at the end of the year? Yeah. I think we're going to like, I think like 1 or 2 p.m. or something. Okay. Yeah, so nice. that's wild to have that. Well, I heard just that right from the start, all the way to the last one. Well, yeah. I think they do that on purpose because you don't want to go from two p.m. church to eight a.m. because that's like a huge shock. Do oh, you know, that's so like true. that would be so difficult. So what they do is they move the earliest to the latest, and then they just bump you up. I think that's what I heard. I don't know how true it is for like everybody, yeah. but it makes sense to do it that way. Yeah. So no, that makes sense for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. So now we're, we're going almost through the year. <laughs> yes. Oh, so he's been counting down the months. Yes. Since January. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Since January, Literally. right? <laughs> I, I know. Guess since last December when they told us it was happening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I totally get that. Every Sunday we're like just a couple more Sundays and then yeah. we're good. <laughs> it was rough because we moved in. We literally moved into our house in December mm-hmm. and church was, I don't know, it was 1130 or whatever it was. Yeah, and we're like, like oh, yeah, this like, is yeah, good. Yeah, we could do this. And then I forgot like the year is ending. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Ch- current church time doesn't matter for anything. You're going to have it for two weeks. I know. And yeah. then they're like, by the way, 830 next <laughs> year. I was way, like, by the way, we life. bought the wrong house. <laughs> We moved to the wrong place. We got to move again, guys. <laughs> I told him, I'm like, we're never moving again. <laughs> I hate moving. No, but we rough. did it. It's you so know true. what? I'm proud it. of us. I'm it might be of one you. of the biggest things we've done this year, <laughs> one of the greatest challenges to overcome. And we were almost there. Oh That's awesome. Good job, guys. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Next. How often do you put your name on those sign-up sheets that get passed around during Sunday Ooh. school? Not the role. Um, so fairly often, actually. Eh, sometimes or almost never. I'm a definitely oh, almost never. It depends on what it is. Yeah. This you is know? big. <sighs> I feel like I'm between sometimes or often because it's, I don't know. I'll bring like cookies. I'll bring, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like a I was going to say in Elder's Quorum, usually the sign up that's going around is to go serve in the cannery, which is during the work day. So. Mm. Yeah. I'm like I see it. I'm like, oh. So you can't nope. anyway. Yeah. yeah. I'll do sometimes. I think that's what I'm going to go with too because mine's between eh sometimes and almost never. <laughs> so, but I did the other day. So, there you go. I'm going with sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Answer yay if you have served a full time mission, are a convert to the church, attend a singles ward, or are an abs- abnormally energetic person. Otherwise, answer nay. Mm. That's What's a lot of possible Interesting. things. Interesting. Convert. I tend to single well, or just an. You're energy. abnormally energetic, so that's easy. I know. At first, I was like, no, no, no. 
Okay, some people could probably consider me abnormally. <laughs> some people. I'll put yay. Oh, man, I don't know you... who to ask. Am I energetic? I, I think. think so. <laughs> I yeah. think you are. You're very outgoing. Okay, okay I'll yeah. do yay then. Okay. <laughs> and you're yay. Yeah, from mission. Also, I'm just abnormally energetic, you know? <laughs> I like how it says abnormally I know. Energetic. It makes it sound not good. Right? Like, it sounds it's like, a little oh, better. okay. I don't know how to answer that, but okay. <laughs> okay. What kind of car do you have? Oh, my gosh. I'm getting called out. So oh, minivan, man. pickup truck, sedan, don't have one, don't need one, or other. We are a part of the minivan club now. Well, that's As your car. Year, it is my car. I am so, so jealous, you guys. I'm still really? in the sedan club. Yeah, I am. That we, makes me feel better. Well, we got we have a, a, a tiny little two door Mustang, and it's oh, yeah. awesome, but it doesn't work for like kids. And yeah. so we're like, let's go get a car. And we got like a four door. I guess that would be a sedan. Is the, I don't yeah. even know yeah. what a sedan yeah, is. Yeah, just a normal car. So we just got like a four door, like uh, just a regular car. And we're always like, we should have gotten a minivan. We've got more kids coming. Like, we yeah. should have gotten a minivan. So every person we see with a minivan, we're like, I regret not getting a minivan. So <laughs> yeah. I'm that glad honestly, you guys are ahead no, of that us. That makes me feel better <laughs> because we bought a minivan. We have one kid. I mean, I guess that's probably where you were at too. Mm -hmm. But we're like, we want more kids in the future. We yeah. need to buy a car now. We might as well get it. Right. But I sometimes feel yeah. so I had, stupid. I had to like, talk her into it. I drive around our one baby. Yeah. yeah. In it's a her minivan. and a baby. And I totally ourselves. get yeah. where like, you're coming from. But you, I feel like you made the right decision because we do regret not getting a minivan. So but you're, also just you did it. The, the sliding doors oh, are huge. The sliding doors. <laughs> no, they, it's really good. Get oh, one as soon yes. as you can. Like, oh my gosh, yes. Just having so much room. Having to put Eli yes. in the car the other day, we like rode with my cousin and I put him in. I hit his head on the roof again. And I was like, I forgot what that was like. <laughs> <laughs> we do that all the time in our car. <laughs> Oh man, I love yeah. it. Oh my god. I mean, I forgot. I mean, you just get out of the habit, and I just went bump. I was like, oh, it wasn't that hard. He didn't even start crying, so it's fine. It's but... all good. I love that. This is the first time hearing of that. <laughs> right? well, it wasn't that big of a deal. No permanent that damage. Is hilarious. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So many so fans, As much as people make fun of them, they're so worth it. Like it's, I bet. Oh my gosh. Good. Yes, I want one so. <laughs> so wait, is a sedan? So, okay, like that's just like a normal four door. Yeah. Is but are car. those like the smaller ones or like the? Uh, Oh my gosh, what are those called? SUVs? Yeah, SUV. Is no, it like an different. SUV or is it a smaller car? No, just it's just like a normal car. Because we have like an SUV type oh, of thing. Oh, okay. Well, so like would that be other, I guess? A, I think yeah. other. That's surprising there's not an SUV option. Yeah, on that yes. should be an SUV. a little dated, I think. See, yeah. SUV is probably going to be the number one now. Yeah, literally. Yeah. So I'll go other because we got like an SUV type car. So Sounds good. Okay, choose an image. All right, Mimi, describe them all for our audience. Oh my gosh, okay. If you're listening, <laughs> there's one that's like a vintagey one with Polaroids. One is flowers. I'm picking that one. One is some like musty old boots. One is, oh, scriptures. I should have picked that. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, one is scriptures. fire and then one is a hand that looks kind of haunting. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Are, I feel like there's an obvious choice for me, at least. What are you guys picking? These are so random. This is so <laughs> difficult for some reason. I mean, a few, <laughs> I don't know why. a few years ago, I would have picked the fire immediately, hands down, but I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm considering picking the fire. I mean, I'm either flowers, fire, or hand. Because okay. I do sign language. So, like, hand. Yeah, is, you know? Yeah. That works for you. I think you're the only person that would be like, oh, it makes sense. A hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally. But the fire also, like, looks cool. Like, I mean, it, if it does. Wasn't, it's very bright. Plus, without, yeah. the, like, if the work boots weren't there, like, oh, for people who work with their hands and stuff. I'm like, that the work boots show, like, someone who works. Like, right. I don't even exactly. Know. I'm going to ask whoever made this quiz, like, what were they trying to figure out? I with know. These like, what is the purpose of these images? Yeah. I'm going to go with hand just for the sake of. Oh no! Choosing it. What did you pick? I, I picked the fire. What did you get your result? I Is did, that okay? Yeah. I got my result it's too. It. It's a ward missionary. <laughs> so you've been that. True. Done it. Do you want to read? Good. Is the blurb really long, or do you want to read? No, they're short. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to be a ward missionary. Whether you've done time in the field or not, there's a full part-time missionary inside of you. You've got a solid testimony, and you're willing to serve when called upon. There you go. I would say that's, that's awesome. pretty accurate. I could see that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, my issue with the yeah. word missionary is it's like, see, when you're a teacher, 
you just show up on Sunday and that's like your time slot. And then like everything else is flexible on your own time. You figure out when mm-hmm. you want to do it versus mm-hmm. the word missionary. Like you got to show up when the missionaries want to have a lesson. You yeah. Don't, you don't pick that, true. you know, like they're like, I need you. It's Thursday at seven. You're like, ah, I was going to watch a movie, but like, I guess I got to go do I this. I shouldn't <laughs> say no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so Sorry. True. I had some plans like, <laughs> yeah, you know, with a milkshake, <laughs> but I guess like, I guess those can wait. I, I guess the gospel's important <laughs> compared to that. I know, especially when it's your calling and it's not just like, oh, I told the missionaries I'd go out with them. Yes, you know? exactly. Go out on a lesson with them. Yeah. <laughs> I'd go, out, I'd go with out with them. I'd go out with them. <laughs> it's pretty nice. <laughs> okay, what did you get? Okay, um, uh, Ward Greeter. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, okay. Oh. Okay, this feels so because the image is somebody putting their hand out to shake your hand. Oh. That feels so cheap because I chose the hand picture. Yeah. It's like, did you choose based on I that? Know, it I'm was like, just should... the picture. All the other know, questions right? don't matter. I should change my picture and see what I get. <laughs> I know. I wonder if you can change it. Oh, you can't go back. This is no, the the prediction's been made. This it's is, been made. This is your next That's calling. what it is. This is my calling. <laughs> Do you want me to read the say? blurb? Yeah. Okay. It says, I'm going to be the ward greeter. It's one of the most sought after callings in the ward, and it's Is going it? to be yours. Is it? I've never. No. <laughs> I don't. Think here's, so. here's the other thing. I, I don't even think we have a ward greeter. Are yeah. those like a normal thing? It's, I can't. I haven't seen one depends. in forever. I feel like a lot of wards, it's the youth who do it. You could oh, have okay. youth. You could have like a ward missionary. You yeah. could have a greeter. Whoever makes the bulletin sometimes because they pass them out. Oh, yeah, oh that I makes did. sense. Okay. I loved being the greeter though. Oh, that's I think so you fun. would like it. I've like kind of never get to done chat it with everyone as they're coming in. You like it to see everyone. Yeah. Say yeah. Hi. Yeah. Okay. I probably would like that. I guess it's because our ward doesn't have one. So yeah. I'm like, what are you? What? what <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> okay. Um. So not only does it involve a heavy element of easy social socialization, but it also doesn't require any post sabbatical responsibility. Oh, there you go. You're an extrovert. You like to make others feel good about themselves and have the firmest handshake in all the land. <laughs> and by land, we mean more boundaries. I do like that because my dad was adamant on teaching us how to shake a hand properly. There you go. Oh, so cute. I do have a good handshake. Wait, okay. I was say, by properly, does that mean oh, firm or does that, that mean crushing? Cr- no. Because some was... people are like, oh, that's how you do it. Yeah, right? <clears throat> oh, and they no. break your hand. Yours was the yeah. perfect balance. Thanks. It was nice. It was really firm. <laughs> I hope so because <laughs> my dad was like, you're going to learn how to shake my hand. Oh my gosh, you literally got, like, that makes so much sense that you got there you that. Go. Like, this, why is I this feel like so this accurate? probably would work. It would probably be really fun. So, you know what? I'll take it. Yes. <laughs> love that for you. Okay. Mine is the ward beautification expert. Wow, what? Is you know, a thing? It's very common. I love that. I have never heard of that. Okay. In addition to your impeccable personal style... You get an yeah. eye for desi- interior design and especially tabletop centerpiece selection. Oh. Yes. Um, yes, this may have been a calling the bishopric made up because there are too many people in the ward and every other position is filled. But this calling is for you nonetheless. Own it. You know what? I would That's own awesome. it. awesome. I want this calling I can totally now. see that. Thank like, you I so feel much. like you... I, I don't know why that fits, but I'm just like, yeah, you would you make go. a mean centerpiece. Like, I just oh feel gosh. like that would work, you Thank know? Thank you so much. This is truly the biggest compliment, like, <laughs> this placement. I love that. No, I think it's so funny how, like, that's just such a meme now in the church is, like, the Relief Society centerpieces are perfect. Because, right? like, yeah. like, it makes sense, though, in a big ward, having this be a calling. I would totally do it. Totally. Okay. And you I've... chose the flowers, right? I did. And those there you are, go. That's so funny. I, it's based there on the pictures, go. guys. It really is. <laughs> so I have to say, I uh, I went back, changed a couple of the answers that I was on the fence about. Okay. I've gotten ward missionary three times. I can't get are away from it. Are you serious? <gasps> I can't. think oh this must just be the spirit, like, working yeah. through this quiz. You should probably go ask to be, oh, be gosh. Yeah. that calling. I'm going to tell him I don't I'm, want it. I'm <laughs> going to tell the bishop. I'm going to send this clip to you him. You need to make this happen. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. You know what? If it was truly inspired, you wouldn't have to send him the clip. He'd find it on his own. It's oh true. Gosh. You wouldn't even there have to preface it or, like, say anything at all. He would just do it. He's, like, going to have a dream tonight. Be like, Eric, I had a dream. You need to be. <laughs> if he did, missionary. I would gladly do it. <laughs> you need to let okay. me know if this happens. Wait, this reminded me of something of, like, Actually, I don't think we have time to get into it. We need to do a future episode, though, on, like, 
dreams and like people have gotten like revelation through dreams oh yeah I was gonna ask yeah you, like, has that ever happened to you like have you ever like gotten lehigh okay i'm talking like i almost just said real people Ooh. <laughs> i'm talking like modern not, not even not like, like joseph smith time scriptural like, process yeah like not temporary uh, examples yeah. temporary examples yeah have, has that ever happened to you i haven't had like people like appear to me or tell me things but i've had dreams that made like something that I was praying about pretty clear to me what the answer was. Mm-hmm. Like when I was praying about whether or not to marry my husband, uh-huh. um, like I, at the time I was waiting for a missionary and, <gasps> and so oh. whenever. <laughs> wait, we didn't get that whole uh, story. Waiting, get, waiting sounds like a bit of a strong <laughs> word there. <laughs> I know. That Off was camera, a whole well, thing. Yeah. Off camera, we can tell that story. But yeah, anytime I like had a dream about marrying him, it was always just like this, this weird like the ceiling wasn't going the way it was supposed to. The lights were all dark and there was like nobody there and they kept forgetting things. It was just like not a smooth thing. Oh my but like, I remember when I was praying about whether or not to marry my, my husband, mm-hmm. it was like this, I just, I just remember this panoramic shot from like above, like an airplane was filming us on the temple grounds. And we were just like in our wedding attire, just like kissing in the grass and the grass was the most vibrant green and the blue, the sky was the most vibrant, like I the colors that you cannot even come up with in your mind. Like I just saw it and it was the most beautiful thing. And I was, I woke up and I was like, there it is. <laughs> like, so does that how mean do you on like, your wedding day you were disappointed because the color wasn't as <laughs> right? good? Right? We were like, that's not the You're right like, green. That's not Can't actually how this. I pictured it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is, no, that's crazy. Do you it, think that's yeah. like how Heavenly Father sees us? Like, do you think it was like no, from oh his gosh. POV? You're, I love you're that. You're on his I drone didn't think watching. about that. <laughs> yeah. On his drone. I was seeing from his perspective, from his drone. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Wait, that is totally meant to be that I asked this question because that's like, that's the craziest thing. Did you ever have dreams? of like your baby before you had your son like oh anything like that I mean I used to have dreams about being pregnant and having babies Mm -hmm. yeah but I don't know that it was anything that was like telling me about my future kids Mm -hmm. or anything I don't know have you I did I'd had a couple dreams when I was pregnant that my baby was a boy and it was before we knew the gender and so that was kind of what I had, I had one dream that it was a girl, but the rest I had like several. Cause your pregnancy, your dreams are so yeah, vivid. Yeah. And like I had several that it was a boy, and that's why I felt strongly that it was a boy. Uh-huh. So it's just so interesting. That is interesting. I, I really feel like dreams are a way that we can like get in closer touch to the other side of the totally. Veil. Yeah. Because it's just like that's probably how they communicate is more similar to dream. Or I don't know. It's just like we're more in tune and we did an episode for our, for our Halloween episode. Actually, mm-hmm. it was really crazy. And they talked about how uh, when you're dreaming, like sleep paralysis, that's also how the dark side, like the dark the side. Dark. Like, the dark side. Star Wars. It's how Darth Vader <laughs> but, like, comes how, after you. How the adversary and like his demons can also reach you oh. when you're sleeping. Anyway, it's crazy. I don't want to get too that much into really that. That is really interesting though. But I think though, also – from the good side that yeah, can happen. Yeah, that is really interesting though. And we don't have to keep this in, but it's like I've experienced sleep paralysis <gasps> before what? and you feel evil when that's happening. Yeah. Like I feel like I am in danger. Like there is something that's about to attack me oh or something. Gosh. You need it to is... watch our episode on that. It I was, do. Like, they oh tell my gosh. all these stories or about Or the podcast, it. the people who came on <laughs> they a have a podcast. on sleep paralysis. Oh, and it's, okay. they really think it's like it's the adversary. And it's the same thing that happened to Joseph Smith when he had his first vision. Oh they my gosh. Like I could totally like that. picture that because yeah. And also, yeah, that's, scientists will say it's yeah. your body's paralyzed, your body just freaks out, and that's yeah. why you feel like you're in danger. Well, you yeah. Control. Like right. I don't. I mean, have you guys ever experienced no. it before? I had a roommate not who fun. did. And yeah. I, so it's, it's just not freaky because you can't move happens. anything, so your you body's not move. responding. Yes, and you, you I can also, freak People out. say you feel like a darkness, like <laughs> literally an evil presence. You do. It, yeah. That's exactly how it is. Like for me. And, and again, we, we don't have to keep this in, but like, yeah, for me, I just, I'm like, I wake up in my room and I can see myself in my room and I'm not actually awake. Like I can tell I'm oh not completely gosh. awake and I can see it's like, it's dark in the room and I can't move anything. And it just feels like there's just this evil overcoming me. And it's just like this really dark, scary, scary feeling. And I'm just trying so hard to just move anything. If I can move anything, I will wake myself up. Yeah. And so the whole time... I'm just like trying so hard to move and then I eventually can, but it's really difficult and it's really scary. <laughs> so that's, that's so interesting fear. that you say that it would be like with the adversary because I could totally see that. For I think sure. they just have more. I don't know what it is about sleeping. We asked them 
a little bit the guests we had on on our Halloween episode, but I'm like, what is it about being asleep that where your subconscious is more like available to like either yeah. darkness or to good? Because I was going to say my one experience with like dreams and revelation, I remember when I got my patriarchal blessing, my patriarch said, I literally had a dream that told me your lineage. Wow. And he's like, that's never happened to me before, but I'm in the tribe of Manasseh. Nice. Manasseh homies, where are you at? There's not as many in like the US, so I don't know. Maybe there's more outside yeah. the US, but anyway. It's like a lot anyway. of people from South America. Are, oh, really? Yeah. Let me know if you're tribe of Manasseh. You're allowed to talk about that, right? Yeah. It's just the I other think parts so. of your yeah. blessing is more private, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's <laughs> like, but like, let's keep it sacred. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been told that you can like talk about that, yeah. just not other things. Yeah, I've anyway. heard people talk about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, but anyway, I just think it's really interesting how like revelation can sometimes come through dreams, and so mm-hmm. yeah, I love that it's story so about your wedding. That's like the craziest yeah. thing. Okay, it's really cool. Anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> the last thing that we kind of wanted to talk to you about um, is maintaining friendships with people who aren't members of the church. Sorry, that was a really rough transition. <laughs> You like the what? demons that haunt you in your sleep, there are other non-members. There, oh my <laughs> gosh! How do we make friends with there them? You go. That's perfect. That's how I you thought relate. mine couldn't get worse, but <laughs> you know, like when there sometimes people go. invite you over for a Ouija board night <laughs> or other demonic things. What do you do about those? How people? do we politely turn them down but still remain friends? Right. That's the next oh like, question. Oh my gosh! No, I wanted oh to ask gosh. you though. Like, do you think it's possible to? be friends with people who aren't members of the church yes yeah okay <laughs> absolutely then yeah. follow up to that well okay obviously i agree <laughs> but the follow-up no. is like maybe they're not members but like what if they're against the church mm-hmm. like can you maintain friendships with those people mm-hmm. who are like just anti or like left the church and they're really angry yeah I personally think so, yes. I think there's probably some gray area. Like, if they are somebody who maybe they're not pleasant to be around or maybe that's all they can ever focus on when they're with you, then, Mm -hmm. you know, that's not going to make a very good friendship, probably, and you might not be able to connect very well. But, I mean, if that's something that they can look past with their friendship with you, then I think you can absolutely look past with your friendship with them, you know? Like, I think it's important to remember that we all have different um experiences on this earth and we all have a different plan and a different everything's different so what works for you may not work for that person and that's okay like i think it's just important to just love people for who they are so that's that's how i feel about i think it's absolutely possible and i think it should be we should be friends with those people so absolutely i couldn't agree with you more like i think like you said if if it's just like they're insistent every time they talk to you they like want to talk about it and want to dive in like Uh if that makes you uncomfortable that's one thing but i feel like a lot of people probably just want to continue like if someone leaves the church they probably just want to like continue their friendships with people they're actually friends with like outside of that like why wouldn't they right and so it's just a matter of like putting your differences aside like we've been taught to be peacemakers and like we can be friends with people who have don't agree with us on other things like religion or politics or like yeah covid vaccine whatever i think it's possible to still maintain relationships with people that you see things very differently yes well and your friendship isn't always based on your beliefs right right it doesn't have to be exactly so it's like your friendship is based on like what you enjoy doing together or like Mm -hmm. just kind of other and i don't know i just i feel like it's that's definitely I don't really know what I'm trying to say, (laughs) but it's like, yeah, I think that you can absolutely be friends with anybody you want to be friends with, no matter how different you are with them. If you enjoy them, then why not? Yeah. So I feel like one thing with that, that sometimes has made me feel uncomfortable is if someone has left the church, but I'm like still friends with them. It's almost like, do they think I'm dumb for like staying in the church? Sure. Yeah. Or do they think like, oh, if they knew what I what I know, like, would they be leaving? Or are mm-hmm. they just naive? Or are they just ignoring facts? Do they, they think we're being brainwashed? Right. That's, yeah. So it's almost like I'm insecure of what with what they think of me mm-hmm. for staying in the church. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that? Like, how can we combat that? I think that is such a good question, and I totally get where you're coming from. It's like they they left the church for whatever reason they did and that's completely fine and so it's hard for you to to continue to be in the church as strong as you are you know Mm -hmm. so it's definitely really difficult to to be 
confident in that sometimes, you know, especially yeah. if this is somebody that you love and you're close with. Um, I have similar experiences with some of with some people that I'm really close with who have left the church and who have a lot of problems with, you know, the way the church runs things. And I kind of just try to I mean, this is just my opinion and my yeah. experience. I don't know if anybody else can relate to this. But for me, I just just like, you know, I can't control what they're thinking. And I think they love me for who I am anyway. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to continue to love the church like I do. And they don't have to. I still love them. And I think they still love me, too. So I, I'm just going to have to push past that insecurity you know which is easier said than done right but um I don't know that's kind of how my experience has been with it I don't know if that makes any sense <laughs> no totally yeah, and remind me did you you didn't grow up in Utah did you no I didn't or I grew up in Colorado, Colorado. Mm -hmm. yeah so there I mean there's a lot of non-members there so if you were not friends with anyone who's not a member of the church then you just had no friends basically right so you have to be friends with I guess oh, that's yeah. what I'm getting you had to be friends with people who weren't members of the church out there yeah oh yeah yeah um, I feel like here in Utah, though, you hear a lot of times people say like, oh, well, you know, I lived in Utah, but I wasn't a member of that church. So people just didn't hang out with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like the one person on the street who never got to hang out with people because I wasn't a member of the church. Yeah. And... Or you hear about these like LDS moms that are like, I don't want my kids hanging out with your kids because you're mm -hmm. not a member. Which part of that is, hey, you should hang out with people with good morals and they're uh -huh. going to help. You know, you think about kids, you're like, yeah. well, you're a teenager. We want to make sure you have good yeah, role yeah. models and yeah. people you're hanging out with are good. So, I mean, I, yeah. I see where the parents come I from. I think that comes from but, a good place, yeah. but it, that can be problematic for sure. Because totally. not every kid who goes to church is a good person anyway. It's true. Right. I am so for like raising your kids with like trying to help them understand like we can be friends with people who have differences than we like yeah. different who are different people than we are have different beliefs different ethnicities different backgrounds like i think we need to be exposing our kids to the world and like safely obviously but yeah. like helping them see that like we you know we're in a little bubble here in utah but like there's other kind of people who exist uh -huh. and it's so important to help them grow that understanding so they can have empathy and be like functioning adults in society yeah completely agree not only that we can be friends with them but we should be yes. friends with them and not from like a place of maybe we can co convert them to the yes, church like not exactly. like that at all it's right. just People are diverse, mm -hmm. you know, people, that's how it is. And you should, and, and that's also just like, again, learning to love everybody, like how we learn in the church, mm -hmm. you know, just loving everybody for who they are and just making connections, making families and mm -hmm. all of that. I think that's just so important. Yeah. And like, let's be so clear. Our church teaches that we should love everyone yes. and like try to be friends with everyone. And so Plus if, there's also that whole in the world but not of the world. Yeah. Doesn't say sheltered and cut off completely from the world. Right. Yeah. Like our prophet, like President Nelson talks, we need to be peacemakers. We need to be loving and accepting of people. Uh -huh. And so I don't know. I just feel like sometimes I hear stories like that and I just feel so bad. And I know there's so many people who've had experiences in Utah especially of like feeling isolated by members or oh. things like that. And it just breaks my heart because – I know that happens, but that's honestly not how it should be. That's I know. not how Jesus would want it to be. So I think as a culture, like as in the church, I think our culture has been improving significantly with that, but people have had experiences. And so I just, I, my heart goes out to them. Yeah, totally. That's like he who's without sin cast the first stone. You know, mm -hmm. it's like that you're not, you're not perfect. They're not perfect. We're all humans. We're all brothers and sisters. We're all daughters and sons of God. Like whether, whether you believe in God or not, like, mm -hmm. And I, I'm not trying to like push that on people. Like whether you believe it, you are his daughter. Or whatever. I'm not trying to say that. What I'm just saying is we're all equal and it's and we don't always treat each other like that. So I think it's like you said, we are taught to love everybody. Mm -hmm. And that is also very freeing in its own. Like, you know, when like back to the whole I have people in my life who have left the church and in the moment you're thinking, oh, my gosh, this is terrible. Like, how am I going to get through this? And you know, I think a lot of people tend to think, how can we bring them back, right. you know? And that was just one of the hugest, like, best reminders for me was just, you don't have to. You don't have to try to fix them because they don't need to be fixed, you right. know? You don't have to try to bring them back. You don't have to do anything. Just love them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, 
I can do that, you know, and that's so freeing when you yep. don't feel like you have to do something about it and just just have that relationship with that person. And that's all that matters. Yeah. So because if they come back, it's not going to be because of you. Yeah. It's going to be because of Jesus. Like, mm-hmm. so why do we put so much pressure on ourselves and yeah. like sacrifice these relationships? I know when all we need to do is just love them and be there for them. And they're on their path. And if they end up coming back, that's going to be between them and God. Yeah. I'm and, so with you. And even if they don't, it's yep, like, you don't. know what? I st- I still love you yep. because because of you, not because yes. of your association with the church. Yes. So. I love yep. that. It's just so refreshing to hear yes. that. And again, I know like, like this hasn't been how it's always been. Like these conversations didn't always happen. Like it, I feel yeah. like for a long time there was such a focus on like, okay, how do we get them back? How do we bring them back to the fold? And like, I get that. I totally get where they're coming from, but I think it's so important just to like relieve ourselves of that responsibility because right. it's really Love not our responsibility. Are, yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And like we were saying earlier, like it comes from a good place, but sometimes we tend to overdo it. Yeah. So <laughs> I, yeah, you're so right. <laughs> Yay. Any other thoughts on this? this has been such a good convo. Well, thank you so much. Like, yeah. it's been so fun this talking to you. This was awesome. This went by so fast, honestly. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to leave with everyone? Oh, geez. I don't think so, other than this was super fun. <laughs> and I'm so excited that I got to come here and do Yay. something yeah, uh, like besides Saints Unscripted. You know, yeah. this was so fun. Thank Where you, guys. Where can people keep in touch with you? Oh, geez. <laughs> That's a great question because I'm just like <laughs> so Find not her on social in media. Person. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you see me, actually, that is the thing. If you see me in person, like, totally come up and say hi. Not to say that I'm like a celebrity, you know, when I leave no, you the house. Totally. But like, I don't know if people have ever recognized you just from Saints Unscripted. Yeah. I had one person recognize me and she was like, I'm so sorry. I know you're just shopping. And I was like, please come and say hi. <laughs> totally. Like I am, you're not bothering me at all. No, so it's the coolest. It's it just is like so putting, awesome. Like, cause when you're just doing social media, it's just like numbers. Right. But like, yeah. if you actually meet someone in person, you're like, yes. I'm recording this for a real person. Yes. And like, she's going to watch I'm like, it. I and like, love it's so... knowing that you watch us yes. and that you hear our stories and that you like, I, I love that so much. Much. oh so, my gosh so yeah. yes always say hi to alex she's always. so friendly like you'd love to meet her so, and thanks. luckily you have blue hair so people can be like oh okay. there it is her. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like out of crowd they're like oh over there <laughs> right oh my yeah. gosh yay well thank yes. you again for coming thank on you. and thank you all for watching we'll see you guys next time bye